Okay, so let's solve another example with two diodes, and this would be our last example in this series. So we have two diodes uh, in this circuit. We have a battery of two volts and then two resistors that are equal. Both of them are R1. And we want to find the input-output characteristics. So let me plot this here again. I have V in and I have V out. Okay, let's start from uh, negative infinity. Again, I've learned that when I have more than one diode, then going from negative infinity or positive infinity is not going to give me that sweet situation where, well, the diodes are all off and things are very simple. It, it well, simplifies things, but not to the extent that I have with one diode. So V in equal to negative infinity. I can tell that D2 is definitely off. Um, why? Because, well, if D2 is, like, basically, if, if the anode of D2 is connected to negative infinity, cathode cannot be, cannot take any voltage that is smaller than that, therefore, D2 is off, right? So D2 is off. And D1, well, likely it's on, right? Because, well, the voltage at node X is going to be something bigger than negative infinity, hopefully big enough that turns D1 on. But this is not, this is, kind of like an assumption. I'm not 100% sure about it. I have to go back and check this later, right? So if D2 is off and D1 is on, how does my circuit look like? It's going to look like this. I'm going to have my V in here, um, a voltage source, because it's on, equal to VD on, um, a resistor, another resistor to ground. And the branch that has the D2 is just basically removed because, well, there's no current in it. I have two R1s, and just to be consistent with the circuit above, I'm going to call here X. So I know that if this is my V out, V out is Vx divided by 2 because it's a resistive divided by two equal resistors, right? And what is Vx? It's V in plus Vd on. So I can say that... Um, V out, well, actually I have it here, so let's just write it here, is equal to V in plus VD on divided by 2. Okay, so starting from negative infinity, I have a line with a slope of 2 that uh, kind of crosses x-axis at VD on divided by 2. So if this is VD on divided by 2, um, and this is the slope of um, 1 over 2, I have a line like this. Great. So how does this, how, how long this continues? Well, let's think about it. Um, it continues as long as the current is flowing in this direction, right? Because that's my, that's the direction that my diet allows for it. Meaning that it continues as long as X, node X, is actually smaller than zero. Why? Because I do have a zero here, right? That's my ground. If I have a zero here and I want the current to flow in this direction, well, X better has uh, a voltage uh, that is basically smaller than zero, right? Because well, current always flows from the higher potential to lower potential. So if Vx is like basically the maximum Vx that is allowed is zero, this means that the maximum V in that is allowed is negative Vd on, right? Because for the diode to be on, if here I have a zero, well, let's use, let's use another color. So if here I have zero on the anode, in the cathode side, the cathode uh, terminal, I should have negative VD on. So for example, if VD on is 0.7, if X is zero, V in has to be negative 0.7. So this is going to go on until I reach negative Vd on. And what will happen after that? Well, after that, I'm going to have, well, the D1 turns off. So for V in greater than uh, negative Vd on. Well, I don't, I don't know the other side of it. So let's write it this way. Um, I don't know the other limit. So for V in greater than this, but I don't know until when, right? So 
smaller than another limit, I know that both my diodes, D1 is off and D2 is also off. Okay, and how does my circuit look like? Well, V in is going to be completely detached from V out because both of those parallel branches of D1 and D2 are going to be basically open circuit. So V out is just going to be by itself connected to ground through R1. And since there's no current here, there's no voltage across R1. So this is going to be my V out and it's going to be zero. So V out is going to be zero because V in is here and there's absolutely no connection between V in and V out. Okay. Now, why did I know that V D two is off, still off? Why didn't Why didn't I think that? Well, D one turned off, but then how about D two? How do I know D two didn't turn on? Well, if you think about it, if you're talking about a situation where X is zero or smaller than zero, then here is also zero or smaller than zero. Therefore, if I have a battery voltage of two volts here V B, then at best, if X is zero and here is zero, everything is zero, even if it's not negative, right? It, sorry, if it, even if it, yeah. Um, yeah, even if it's not negative, at best it's zero, therefore this is gonna be two volts. Therefore, for V in at least, uh, until V in becoming two, two volts plus the VD on, my D2 is still off, right? So my anode is in the order of two volts. So like way before getting to two, let's say VD on is point, 0.7, right? Uh, my VIN has to get to somewhere around 2.7 for D2 to get to turn on, right? So before that, both of the diodes are off, right? So the diodes are off, meaning that V out is equal to zero. So this is how my V out VIN is gonna look like. Now, when does it turn on? Well, if V out is zero and I have a two volts here, V in is going to turn on when, well, it has become greater than two plus V D on, right? The moment V D V in becomes two plus V D on, it uh, the D two will turn on, right? So D two will turn on when V in becomes greater than or equal to uh, two plus, and this two is coming from VB, uh, plus VD on of D2. Okay, so what will happen after that? After that, um, my circuit is gonna look like basically this. So I'm having this V in, uh, D1 is off, I'm just showing D2. So I'm having a battery here, another battery, and then V out and then a resistor to ground, R1. And this is my V out, this is two volts, this is for D2, so VD on. So I can see that V out is equal to V in minus two minus V D on. So if V D on again is assumed as 0.7, it's V in minus 2.7. So it's gonna be a line with a slope of one. So a higher slope than the last line. So the slope here was one over two. Slope here is one and it's gonna go all the way to infinity, okay? So basically this is how, like basically V out and V in are gonna be connected together, the R1 uh, for, for anything, any V in greater than this border, my R1 is not gonna matter because V in and V out are kind of like tied together through uh, a couple of voltage sources. So if I wanna write the diode conditions so this is d1 this is d2 so in the beginning i have d1 on and d2 off in the middle i have both of them off and on the right or in the end i have off on 
I know that both examples that I've solved with two diodes have basically only three different situations, and then uh, the one situation in the middle have both of the diodes are uh, both of diodes off. But uh, the this, this situation is not exactly like this all the time. So I encourage all of you to solve all the examples in the assignment too that will be posted uh, soon. And uh, it will be posted in the beginning of this week. And uh, basically you will see different kind of scenarios that could happen with diet circuits. Um, if you have actually paid attention up to now, you, you might have noticed that with diet questions, yes, we do have a certain strategy that we start from like certain limit of the VN. Let's say if we go from negative infinity to positive infinity or vice versa, but each circuit is kind of like unique, right? And a lot of uh, tricks I used uh, during this the, these analysis really comes from experience, really comes from solving more and more diet questions and knowing that like what kind of assumption I should make that makes sense and it, it, I, I don't face a paradox or any kind of like contradictions. Um, so this is another reason I really, really encourage you guys to uh, solve all the assignment uh, questions and also attend the uh, tutorial session so that you can actually um, ask your questions from the TA uh, when she actually solves all these questions for you. Thank you and uh, see you next week.